Overseeing who can access different areas of your office can be time consuming and challenging. With Sesame, we offer a simple solution. Everything starts at the admin side of our app, a platform allowing complete control over who and when people can enter any door in our system. On the front page, Ali can log in and then gets access to some basic information like number of active users, latest entries, and any issues or complaints. From here, Ali can also add new employees, and today happens to be Matthew's first day. Ali can input his personal details, like first name and last name, and an email. Once this user is created, it will automatically send an email with an activation key that Matthew can use to finish the registration process. Now Matthew has his email, he's ready to start the registration process. He can use his code to know the app who he is. And then we just need three photos to make sure we can recognize him in our system. Whoa, sexy. Looks like you're ready to go, Machu. Looks like you made it in one piece. Now Matthew can simply open Sesame and open Sesame. It seems like Matthew's found an office he likes the look of, but is that your office Matthew? With Sesame, you have complete control over who can enter what doors. Sorry, Matthew, this one's not for you. No, no, no. For the mobile app, we use React Native because of the cross-platform development, so it's easily deployable for iOS and Android. We used it, we used it with Expo because it provides really cool packages for the camera that we were able to use. And on top of that, we used Redux for state management. For a server, we use the combination of Node.js and Express, also typed with TypeScript. That's for scalability and robustness. For our databases, we decided to use two databases. We used Mongoose for our more linear data, and then we used Postgres for our relation-based data. And for our facial recognition, we actually used Microsoft Cognitive Services for taking into account security and privacy when dealing with data. For the admin dashboard, we choose Next.js because it's blazing fast and it comes with a great performance. It also has some great features, such as a routing system, lazy loading, and prefetching. For the state management, we use the Redux, which allows us to manage our state in one single place, which makes our code traceable and predictable. We also use TypeScript for cleaner and more reliable code. We also choose SAS because it's very dynamic and much easier to write and maintain than CSS. Coordinating six people can be challenging, so we strongly recommend good communication. We used a project management app called Monday and had daily morning meetings to keep track of what each team was working on and whether we needed something from other teams. In terms of structuring the data, we really recommend planning it, not just the back end, but also how it's going to interact with the front end because that can avoid a lot of problems down the line. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have issues, but those issues are going to be a lot easier to solve if you've planned it beforehand. Another point to take into account is the Git flow. So how many repos you're going to use, how many branches, how are you going to merge, because that's going to avoid a lot of problems down the line. And also, if you have a person in your group who's very passionate about the linting, listen to that person because they know best.